So you've been playing around with the idea of buying a very exotic element for your personal element collection. You've probably heard about Onyx Met. It's well known among element collectors. And as far as I know, they have a monopole on Technesium. It's really the only site that isn't Russia or something like this, where you can get Technesium as a private individual. But is it really Technesium? As you've learned from another video of mine, caution is especially necessary when dealing with such exotic elements. Fortunately, I work in a nuclear chemistry lab and have the necessary equipment to test this for you. This is the thing. A small strip of a silvery grey shiny metal. I cleared everything with onyx mats, so this is now the official analysis for this sample. Beforehand only one thing could be analytically confirmed before purchase. It was deposited on gold. As proof I was shown a spectrum from Theromino on which the gold x-ray lines were visible. So far so good, this can even be visually verified. When I put this piece under the microscope you can see that it is indeed gold. On the edges you can see cut marks where the gold shows through and if you look on the surface you can see spots here and there where the gold is directly visible. So the layer of this still unknown metal is not really thick. With such an appearance it's about 100 nanometers at most. That's the limit where you can see the underlying material when using a gold leaf for example. But the metal is very cleanly electrochemically deposited on there. Gotta say that. Okay, technetium is radioactive. So let's test it with the Coma 170. And through the glass vial absolutely nothing comes true. This shouldn't be surprising either because the beta energy of technetium is only about 84 kilo electron volts on average. No matter how much you have it would be easily shielded by the glass. Okay, so now we are not talking about Mega Becquerel's amount. Becquerel or Kilo Mega Becquerel is a unit in which radionuclides that is, radioactive isotopes, are given. It's much more helpful than the unit grams. But using the specific activity, which can be easily looked up, they can be converted into each other. So then onto the Geli and we can actually see two lines, which from the energy are in the XRF X-ray range at about 77 kilo electron volts and 68 kilo electron volts. Let's check and see. Aha, these are the gold K alpha 1 and gold K beta lines. Very nice. We are able to verify the deposition on gold. What does that mean? The X-ray fluorescence occurs because gold is present and through some process an inner electron, an electron on the K shell is knocked out. Higher lying L electrons fill this gap and this comes with the release of energy. This energy is emitted in the form of X radiation. In the K beta line the hole in the K shell is filled by an electron from the M shell. But why is there even a hole in the K shell? In this case it can only be the silvery mystery metal that is radioactive and ionizing the gold. The K electrons can be knocked out by collisions with the electrons that is the beta radiation of technetium. Or when technetium decays, the daughter nucleus ruthenium receives a recoil and this recoiled nucleus can also cause ionization or through several other effects. And judging by the remaining gamma spectrum, it must only be technetium since we have a very shiny silvery metal and it's radioactive, but it doesn't show any gamma lines. Sure, technetium has a 84 kilo electron volt gamma line, but with an occurrence probability of 0.00065%, we can just barely see it if we measure gram amounts. And if that were to be uranium, thorium or neptunium or something else like that, we would have already seen lines with a relatively low occurrence probability. I measured for good 24 hours, but that's not good enough for me. I want to see lines that are directly related to technetium. So the X-ray detector has to be used and after a weekend of non-stop measuring, here it is. A peak at 19 kilo electron volts. These are ruthenium K alpha 1 lines, a direct proof of technetium. To preempt the question, the peak at 11 kilo electron volt is the gold L beta line. Another proof of gold. So I said when technetium decays, ruthenium is formed. And in this case, from technetium 99, the ruthenium 99. Why technetium 99? Well, first of all, it's by far the most produced technetium isotope. And um, here's a suitable video for that. Go watch that. Other isotopes, for example, technetium 98, would be easily visible in the gamma spectrum. In any case, ruthenium 99 is formed by the decay and receives a recoil. This is enough to ionize the ruthenium. Usually this ionization occurs in the outer shells, but transitions in the levels are too low energy for our detector to detect them. Very rarely inner electrons are also knocked out by this recoil and the probability of the transition can be looked up on the IAEA website. Tada! 
Ruthenium X-ray, 19.2 kilo electron volts, is the L3 to K transition with a probability of occurrence of 0.00033%. Without technesium, there would not be ruthenium on the gold foil, emitting X-ray lines due to the recoil of the beta decay. And this is a solid proof that there really is technesium on this sample. But I can already see the question, yeah, that's nice, but how much technesium do I get? I can only estimate it carefully, but qualified. Calculation number one, based on the literature. The sheet has a surface of seven square millimeters. According to the microscope image, it is about 300 nanometers thick with technesium coated. That means we have about 0.0007 cubic millimeters of technesium. So 0.0000007 cubic centimeters of technesium. With a density of 11.5 grams per cubic centimeter, we get 0.0000805 grams of technesium with a specific activity of 6.33 times 10 to the power of 8 becquerels per gram we have about 5096 becquerel per site and since it's coded on both sides you get about 10191 becquerels of technesium 99 calculation number 2 based on the measurement data we have 898 events in the 19.2 kilo electron volt peak with a probability of occurrence of this line of 0.00033%, let's say the efficiency of the detector is around 10%, and due to this really extremely unfavorable measurement geometry, we only measure around 10% of that. Then we come to 272,121,212 events. That should have been measured with a measurement time of 257,235 seconds, we get about 1,058 becquerels. So now we have set a rough framework which amounts of technesium we are talking. So anything between 2,000 and 10,000 becquerels. So now you have all the information that you would want to have when considering the question, do I really want to buy this? Well, definitely you will get technesium. That much is certain. And I don't think you can get it anywhere else. As an extra information, I paid for this sample out of my own pocket and I didn't get this sample for free, okay? A special thanks goes to the Working Group of Analytics and Fundamental Nuclear Chemistry from Dr. Erik Strupp and the Division of Nuclear Chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.